it's really two words and it's keep pushing. You never realize when you're, how close you are to getting to that next step until you take it. Every single time that I've had to switch gears or switch jobs, every single thing has gotten me closer to where I am today without realizing it. I can laugh about losing all those jobs now, but of course at the time it was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay my bills? Like, this is terrible. This is not what I went to college for. How am I gonna make it work? If you believe in yourself and you believe in what you're trying to do, you say, okay, you know what? That didn't work out. So we're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna find something else. If you know where your end goal is, keep striving for that and you, you really will get there. Welcome everybody to episode 15 of the Paul and Pals podcast. I'm your host, Pony Boy Paul, and Paul and Pals is a podcast where I interview my creative pals to learn how they became who they are today to inspire you for tomorrow. On this episode, I have a creative conversation with my pal, Kayla Rivers. She is a home designer that is really, really good at a job, and she actually documents everything she does via her blog and Instagram page, both at Kayla Simone Home. Uh, now, in this episode, Kayla kind of takes us through what kind of influenced her to start this whole designing mindset, uh, and it was a mix of the game Sims and her boyfriend. Um, she also talks about, you know, the trials and tribulations she's faced getting to where she is now, whether that's losing, you know, one job or two, three, four. Um, what doesn't really matter, what matters is that she's, she's learned from that, and she actually ended up doing, you know, what she always wanted to do. And then we kind of also talk about, you know, actually purchasing a home, a whole new home that they actually built from the ground up. So uh, you guys will learn a lot from this from this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. But without further ado, let's get creative. Hey, how you doing, Kayla? Hey, everybody. Took my volume down real quick. Can you hear me well? Yep. Can you hear oh, me? Cool. Yeah. How How are you doing? How, how's life? Um. Pretty good. Can't complain. How's how's that new home of yours? Great. Um, empty, kind of, as you can see. We yeah. sold our couch last week, and the new one won't be here until next week. Oh, word. I was thinking, I was like, this doesn't look very, like, interior designery, but you can't really <laughs> hide the fact that there's no couch. Yeah. So. No, I think it kind of adds to it. You're kind of like, okay, she's really going through it. So I guess we'll, yeah. we'll learn more about you got to this position. Um, mm-hmm. But just to start, I want to just ask you one How's life been? How's 2020 been for you? And how's everything else? Um, wow. So 2020 was a lot. When the year started, um, we had no idea that we were going to buy a house. That wasn't like our goal for the year Mm -hmm. or anything. Um, started with an apartment search. We were looking at three bedroom apartments. And at that point it was like, why would you get a three bedroom apartment? We could just buy a house. Mm -hmm. Um, so we bought a house I lost my job. I got a new job. Um, We just got a dog last year um, at Christmas time. So this year has been just a lot of things. But honestly, I can't complain. Okay. I'm glad to hear you're in good spirits. And uh, actually going back to that, you mentioned, you know, your boyfriend, Ira, my good friend. That's actually how we met. I think I was in Austin. It was July 4th weekend, actually, in Mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah. I think that's where I met you. And I don't even think you really told me much about what you were doing, right? And it wasn't I don't until, think so. It wasn't until after you started, like, posting all your home stuff. I'm like, oh, like, this is actually kind of, <laughs> like, like dope. So mm-hmm. I'm really happy to see that it's been successful for you, and I would definitely want to learn more. Thank you. Um, but let's kind of start at the beginning, and you can lead the way. Where do you kind of feel that your story starts or your creative awakening? Um, so... I feel like I always, without knowing it, I always wanted to do design. So like growing up, I was always playing Sims on the computer and I was the type of person that would, so this is starting like, I never had Sims 1, but starting with Sims 2 and I think now we're on like (laughs) Sims 4 or something. Um, I was always like playing on Sims, but I would never get past the like create the house part. Mm -hmm. So I would never actually play the game. I would just always be creating the characters and playing, like building the house. Yeah. Um, and then just like decorating my bedroom growing up, I would always move things around, paint the walls. Um, but it didn't really dawn on me that I wanted to do that as a career actually until I started dating Ira. He was the one that was like, well, you're looking for a job and you decorated our apartment really nice. Why don't you become a designer? I'm like, I can't, I can't be a designer. I don't have a degree in interior design. My degree is in business marketing. Um, 
but yeah, I went with it and now I've been doing that for about three years. Okay. I, re- I see you out here, King, <laughs> but no, that's dope. So I kind of want to learn more about the, the sim stage. Like, was it like you saw the sims was a thing and then you wanted to buy it or was you were like kind of bored around the house, you tr- started playing it and then you were like, oh wow, this is amazing. Uh, um, honestly, I don't even know how I got the sims game. Like I was in elementary school. And so I think maybe my mom or somebody bought it for me. And as I started playing, I was like, wait, this is actually really cool. I can build like a whole little like fake life in this. I had all the cheat codes so that I could have like unlimited money so that I wasn't limited to what I could do. Uh Um, But yeah, for years, that was like the only game that I would play. I've had Sims 2, 3, and now I have Sims 4 on my laptop, on the Xbox like I'm, I'm a big Sims fan. That's crazy. Shout out Sims. You gotta get that. that yeah. That, that partnership for real. We giving them too much, too much clout right now. Okay, let's let's keep it going. So you kind of had Sims, but you you still said it wasn't until recently within you started dating your boyfriend. So in between that, kind of like what was your your childhood like lifestyle and how did you kind of get to where you are today? Um. So. Throughout high school, really starting in elementary school, that was the first room that I designed. It was hot pink and it had zebra stripes on the wall. So <laughs> my design taste, as you can see, has changed okay. quite a bit yeah. since then. For the, for the better, yeah. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I like all growing up, I would always rearrange my room. I would always be repainting. Um, and then in college, like the coolest thing ever I had like the dorm room that was just decked out and had like the headboards on the bunk beds and just it looked like a magazine shoot and where'd you go to Um, school I went to LSU hey okay go Mm -hmm. Tigers go Tigers (laughs) yeah so I actually applied for our dorm room to be part of the like tour that they would bring new kids on Mm -hmm. and they sent me back an email that was like hey, we really love your dorm room, but it creates kind of an unrealistic expectation for other people because it looks too good. (laughs) What? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I feel like I probably should have known at that point, like, hmm, design. But still, I got a business degree. Um, I had a few jobs straight out of college that were more marketing related. Mm -hmm. Um, But it wasn't until I quit one of those jobs that and was looking for something else to do that Ira was like, seriously look at being an interior designer damn that's amazing i love the inspiration and yeah. um going back to business marketing because i think i'm starting to understand a little bit more because you kind of paint that picture right because when i think of marketing mm-hmm. i feel like design is a big part of it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. the whole point of marketing is somebody sees it and they're like oh what's that you know and i feel right, like exactly like it grabs your attention exactly right so when you were thinking marketing what did you want to do with it per se So, you know how when you watch TV or, like, movies or something, there's always, like, those marketing execs that are, like, in this high-rise building and they're working on all these different commercials and, like, marketing plans for different, um, like, companies, different brands. So, I thought that that was still a thing, but that's not not really a thing anymore. That was more of, like, a 90s, like, early 2000s. Now, companies have their own in-house marketing team that does all the marketing for them always. And Dang, so you were sold a lie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and like nobody told me the whole time I was in school, like, mm, just so you know, that's like not really a thing anymore. There yeah. are definitely still marketing firms, but yeah. not to that level. Like I'm somebody that gets tired of stuff very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I knew that I didn't want to do marketing just for one company and always having to like reinvent the wheel, kind of come up with new marketing plans yeah. for the same product, exactly, the same yeah. brand. I wanted to do different things, which is why interior design is great because you're always working on a new room. You're always working on a new house with new clients, new styles. Mm -hmm. So I like being able to like kind of jump around and test out different things. Got you. And uh, take us through your first job after, after college. Cause it seemed like you kind of, cause when you were going into it, I don't know at what point you realized that it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. When Mm -hmm. you were leaving college, did you know that you always kind of wanted to bounce around or like, how did that? come to be um I did with a marketing degree all of the jobs that I was finding were basically sales jobs and I'm like not a salesman at all I hate sales I know everything is sales but I honestly just hate sales um so the job that I got straight out of college was actually a leasing manager position so I did a little bit of marketing for the apartment complex that I worked for Mm -hmm. um 
Well, actually, let me back up. So when I was in school, I was a leasing assistant for the apartment complex that I worked at. So getting college students to sign leases Mm -hmm. um, and then took a promotion that moved me to Texas. Um, So I was working in San Marcos as a leasing manager. And really what made me realize that I didn't want to do that is because apartment complexes rip off college students and I didn't want to be a part of that. So that's why after, I think I was there five weeks, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I just quit after five weeks. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Trust me. When I know I don't want to do something, I'm very quick to be like, okay, what's next? Um, This isn't for me. Gotta love it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when you realized that it was like, ah, they're just ripping everybody off. What did you kind of have a plan in place when you quit or were you just like, let me, what year was this by the way? (laughs) This is, I graduated in 2017. Okay. I took that job in August. I was out in September. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have a backup? So I never quit a job without having another job lined up. So I already had a job lined up being a personal assistant. Um, This one was actually a pretty cool gig. I was a personal assistant for a guy that had multiple private islands and resorts in Belize. Okay, I'm about to say. All right. Yeah, cool. so that was really fun. Like, first week on the job, I got to go to Belize and visit one of his um, private islands there, and he, like, kind of showed us around. We went snorkeling. We went scuba diving. Like, that was super fun. Is he still, like, hiring? Or how, you know, how do I... <laughs> I mean, just, just to... We can talk about it after the show, but, like, that, that sounds really dope. How did you apply for that? Um, I found it on, like, Google Jobs or something, and applied I had to go through various interviews I interviewed with his previous assistant that had been moved into a different role um I interviewed with his assistant before her that was now the CEO of that company um and then finally I interviewed with him and then accepted the position and then two days later they're like hey we've got a Belize trip scheduled for next week do you want to go and my mom was like "Mm, this seems kind of sketchy like (laughs) Like you just, you found them on Google jobs and now you're going to Belize, but everything's fine. I'm still here. (laughs) It was great. It was a lot of fun. That's crazy. And then like, what was that time? Like, did you were like, oh, this is dope, but I didn't really want to stay here. Like, like, what did you actually like gain from it? Um, from free trips to Belize. Right. (laughs) Um, So like personally, it just wasn't a good fit for me. Number one, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I don't like being at the beck and call of somebody all the time. My like personality just isn't set up for being a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, the company is great. The people were great. It just wasn't a great fit for me. Um, So when I left that company, that was the time that Ira was like, um, it was just me and my boss like weren't meshing well. So he was like, Hey, I'm gonna give you three months severance and you can go off and find something else. So yeah, so it was it was pretty great for me, and it was during those three months that I was just kind of sitting around. This is now, um, I guess, like summer of 2018. Okay. I've had a lot of jobs since yeah. I graduated. It's only, it's only been three years. <laughs> yes, so um, this is summer of 2018, and Ira was like, "Well, why don't you try design?" And so applied for a job that I found on Instagram, being a design assistant. And got that job, and that's what got me into interior design. On Instagram? Yeah, I searched Austin, like, hashtag Austin interior design, and one of the first um, posts that came up on the, like, little search page was a small boutique firm right in, like, central Austin, literally right down the street from where we lived, that was looking for a design assistant, and they just posted it, like, a couple days before. That's a sign right there. Exactly. That's yeah, it was great. Okay, so then you reached out to them via Instagram, and then, I mean, at that point, you seemed like you were really following your passion, so you were kind of confident mm-hmm. in that. So when you um, when they got back to you, was it kind of like, oh, this is what I want to be doing? Did you feel that? Like, how, how was that experience? Yeah, that was awesome, because that was like my first real taste of interior design. So when I was a personal assistant, I got to help out with some of the design aspects at the... Um, like at the resorts and things, Mm -hmm. but it was mostly just like other people telling me what to order. Um, Mm -hmm. But this was the first time that I actually got to do hands-on projects and lead some of the projects myself, like some of the smaller scale projects. And we worked from budgets of like $5,000 to like $2 million. So there was a huge range of projects that we worked on. Um, And it was a lot of fun. And these were like all new construction homes. So was it like, 
builders coming to you guys? Like they wanted to plan like a community or was it like specific individuals? These were were individuals. Mm -hmm. So this Mm. is not the job that I'm in now. It was actually still two jobs back. Oh, so we still got some jobs to go. So we still have some jobs to go. We're going to be here for a while. Y'all sit (laughs) sit tight. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So that was... um, the one of the biggest projects that we worked on it was a new construction home but she didn't do the construction of it like she wasn't involved in that process so Mm -hmm. we were changing some of the things that had just been done but it was full like she moved in with nothing so it was like full design of the entire house and it was maybe like four thousand square feet wow and then yeah the one that i got to work on myself was a small airbnb out in fredericksburg um, that they use as like a um, like a bridal Airbnb mm-hmm. for like uh, bridal showers, bridal parties, and stuff like that out in wine country. Got you. Okay, that sounds really dope. And then going back to that, it just came to mind. So the person you were helping wasn't on the initial new construction design, but they brought her in. Were they just not happy with the original design, or how did that setup work? Um. Oh, so I was helping. I was a design assistant to the head designer. So the company that I worked for did branding and marketing and interior design. Oh, so God. there was like a head of the branding and marketing side, and then there was the sole designer. Mm-hmm. And so I was his assistant, helping him out on all those projects. Got you. Okay. Sounds dope. I'm starting to like, starting to get your, get your vibe now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You want to take yeah, us to every, the... <laughs> every single thing has been like another step up, another yeah. step up to get here. No, but that's dope. I think even in that short amount of time, I think it's really dope that like, one, you've been able to realize what you don't want to do and actually mm-hmm. do something about it. And then now it's kind of like you're starting to find your path and you're like appreciating it more and more. So right. you want to take us to the next job? <laughs> yes. So um, I feel like none of these jobs have like a, a happy ending story. <laughs> but so that job... Um, I came into work one day and they were like, hey, just so you know, we're no longer working with our business partner. We don't do interior design anymore. It's like a random Thursday. And I'm like, okay, so (laughs) what does that mean for me? And they're like, yeah, well, without a design department, we don't really need a design assistant. (laughs) Okay. I shouldn't be laughing, but damn, okay. No, (laughs) I mean, it is funny like, just imagine you're coming in, like, do-do-do, yeah. going to get my day started. And they're like, hey, can we speak to you? <laughs> Record scratch. Yeah. So um, after that, mm-hmm. I, let's see. After that, I started working at Havenly, which is an e-design company. Um, can you explain what that, similar. what that is? Yeah. So it's another interior design firm, but it's completely like online virtual. So you go on the website and you sign up for a design package. Their design packages range, I think from like $20 to $75. Um, and you can get your whole, you it's like per room packages, um, but you can get your whole house design on Havenly and their platform. is honestly a really like yeah, awesome I've never platform. Heard of that. That's dope. Yeah, it's similar to um, like Modsy, Laurel and Wolf, if they're still around. Those are all platforms that you could use. Mm-hmm. I recommend Havenly. They're kind of the best in the biz. Can I get um, a referral code? Or like a- <laughs> <laughs> I don't Simone have a referral 20? code anymore, <laughs> oh. but I know some awesome designers that still work there gotcha. that I can give you a referral code for. And actually about that, so when they design that room for whatever that package, do they just tell you all the the uh, stuff they use for it or like how do you actually get the actual okay so all in the platform is where you would order all your stuff from so let's say i'm pulling things from target from cb2 from west elm from world market like it's all right there in your curated shopping list so Mm -hmm. it's like a one-click checkout system so you can decide like oh i'm gonna get my bed my pillows my bedspread but i'm gonna wait on the rug and you just check out all through havenly's platform so you're only swiping your card one time Ah, and then somebody from havenly goes out to all of those different sites and buys all the things for you and then ships it all to your house and you do all the install but you get like a rendering you get um like unlimited access to like messaging back and forth with your designer Mm -hmm. um about like hey how high was i supposed to hang the pictures and stuff like that (laughs) so it was a lot of work but it was really cool got you and i'm assuming because i think you mentioned this on your blog that like you consider yourself an e-designer so from that from that job is that where you gained those skills or did you already kind of knew that coming in no that's definitely where i would say i gained 
like all of my, not all of my design skills, but all of my like technical design skills, like being able to create the Photoshop renderings and like the 3D renderings, Mm -hmm. learning how to create a floor plan. Like I basically learned how to do all of that stuff in that job because it was so fast paced. Like I was taking seven to eight clients every single week. Wow. Yeah, it was, like I said, it was a lot, (laughs) but it was a lot of fun. Did you make everything off head? Was it like, Let's say I come in, I'm like, yo, like, I have no idea what I want to do. Or this, if somebody comes in like, yo, I want this, this, and that. Like, how are you thinking about the packages? Um, so it kind of depends. A lot of times when people sign up, they have some type of inspiration image. But the way the process starts, you um, create mood boards from them. You create three mood boards for them to choose from. They select which one they like the best. And then mm-hmm. you create a design concept based off of that. And you're like in communication with them the whole time so they can approve the design as you go along. Um, and that's like how you get to your end design so that you're not like creating this whole design just for them to be like, no, I hate it. Yeah, yeah You've like it. worked with them <laughs> no, throughout not. the whole thing. Like, you're trash. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, trust me. I've had some clients that are like, what is this? I didn't ask for any of this. And I'm like, <laughs> you said you liked it. <laughs> okay. That's dope. All right. So, okay. It sounds really like... Heaven, Havenly is really dope. We gotta let's move on. To, I don't want to keep giving them free clout. Right. But, um, <laughs> so what kind of? Because it seemed like there was another job after that, or so after that is the job that I'm in now. So okay. Havenly again ended on a sour <laughs> note. The day that Ira and I had our design meeting for this house that we're building. So the day that we got to choose our floors and our cabinets, all that, blah blah blah. Um, that was like March of 2020. So middle of COVID, um, maybe April of 2020, Mm -hmm. they get all of the designers on a conference call, like a zoom call. And you can tell as soon as you log into the call, like the energy is just (laughs) off. I'm like, Oh no, what are they going to say? They got their web cameras off. Like (sighs) exactly. Everybody's screen is black. And so I'm just like, okay, what is this about to be? Because we need to get out of here in 45 minutes. We've got a design appointment to get to. And they're just mm-hmm. like, look, I'm sure you know the country's not doing well. So unfortunately, we're going to have to let you all go. I can't win. <laughs> I like, literally cannot win. <laughs> you came in there ready like, ah, ah yeah, I guess. Right. Again. I'm thinking this is going to be a quick check-in. Like, hey, just let you know everything's good. Mm-mm. You're all Damn. out. Bye. Got yeah. You. Okay. Wow. So this is, you said March? This is April of this okay, year. Okay. It's like peak Corona and they just yes. fired you. Yeah. After they'd been telling us for weeks that uh, uh, everything was good. Got you. So what's your mindset now? Like, how did you rectify this? <laughs> take, take this through. Um, <laughs> so we went to the design appointment. I tried to put it out of my mind. I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. God's got it. He'll handle it. Mm -hmm. Because it's COVID, we get unemployment payments. So that's good. We Mm -hmm. got the stimulus check on top of that. We got the like COVID $600 bonus. So honestly, it worked out better because with all of that money combined, I got more than my paycheck. (laughs) So (laughs) it was like, (laughs) yeah, I was like, so you, I'm just going to get money and like not really have to do anything for the next couple of weeks while we build this house. Granted, I was still looking for a job, yeah. but I mean, it worked out. You took so. your time on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so when did these $600 payments stop? Because I need to make sure I'm in somebody's seat before yeah. then. Yeah, for real. Okay, so that's dope. So I'm glad yeah. you were able to uh, get that fixed out. And so I'm assuming now you're currently in another similar role or... So now I'm doing new home design, which oddly enough is what I wanted to do from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, So that design appointment that I had gone to to design this house, now that's what I do for people every day is help them pick out their cabinets, their wall paint color, all of that stuff for their house. I love that. Your your mom just Mm -hmm. commented, counting blessings, not problems. Yep. I love that. I love that. That's right. That's good that we finally got to... Your yes, current career path. Ho- hopefully it ends, you know, better. Maybe it doesn't end. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but right. I- <laughs> yes. Hopefully this one. Hopefully this one is good because yeah. I love my company. I love what I do. So okay, that's dope. And I kind of want to ask you, kind of throughout all this. Obviously, you're doing all your career stuff, but I think you started your blog. Was it last year or earlier this year? 
Um, I started it in, I think it was 2018, 2018 but okay. didn't really use it as much. So I started it like right after I, right after that interior design assistant role was mm -hmm. no more. Yeah. Um, and then used it for a little bit then. And then when I started working, like doing e-design, I couldn't do it anymore. Like I was already at max capacity. I didn't have time to be on Instagram mm -hmm. and like taking my own clients and stuff. So then once Havenly ended in April, that's when I really ramped up. And that was really like the turning point for me where I decided like, no matter how busy I get, no matter how much I have on my plate, I've got to put Kayla Simone home as a priority because this is the one thing that's going to be like, I control how long I'm going to be here where you don't control how long you're going to be at someone else's company. So Gotcha. No, that's dope. I think I like that initiative because I think it's definitely worked out for the best. I've def I'm definitely mm -hmm. seeing your growth, so shout out to that. And kind of, I, I want to go a little bit into that. So, was it more of that oh, another job loss? Like I got to look for another type of income. Like what made you really be like, man? I've been thinking about this for a while. Let me just do it. You know. Um, a little bit of both. I think um, when I was at my first design assistant position we didn't really take a lot of like smaller scale projects, like lower budget clients. And that's when I realized that I really had a knack for that. Like I'm, I'm really efficient. So I'm really good at taking those projects and like turning it around quickly so that I can hop onto the next project. Mm -hmm. So that's really how and why Kayla Simone home started was for me to be able to take on my own design clients and do e-design myself. I quickly realized that it's not the most cost effective thing because mm. companies like Havenly exist where you can pay you can pay them less and like the company because of like scale will worry yeah. about paying the designers whereas if it's just one on one in order for me to be like fairly compensated for my time it's more than what people are usually willing to pay when they have mm. such a small budget so yeah. that's when i kind of flipped Kayla Simone home over from being e-design focused and like getting design clients to I'm going to do projects myself and I'll just give you the information for free about how I do it and mm. like trying to go down the influencer path instead of trying to go down the business path. I like that. It's dope. You're killing me with that. And I, I'm, I think you. I'm actually curious about that. So it seems like your initial idea was, you know, I want to help people out and kind of help them design their, their, their place. And obviously, you know, it's, if it's not paying you for your time, it, I can see that being kind of very negative. But in, mm -hmm. in your mind, do you kind of still want to do that eventually? Because it seems like you're, you're fit for that. So what are your thoughts on that? I do. Um, I think now being in like new home building, I would love to go down more of the path of like starting a, doing, being involved in a project from start to finish. So like from the time that you're designing the build of the house all the way through mm -hmm. furnishing the home. Um, because it, it's still getting to work on different projects, but it's getting to see that project all the way through to the end. I love e-design. I love the fact that I don't have to do any of the install. It's easy for me to just like do everything on my computer and say, here you go, go put that bed together, or, like go hang the things yourself. Mm -hmm. But it also, it's kind of disheartening that I never get to see it finished. Mm -hmm. Like unless somebody sends me pictures after the fact, yeah. I never get to see if like they actually use my design, if uh -huh. like my hard work was all for nothing. So I do kind of, I want to get back into doing design, but I want to be able to see the project from start all the way to the end to like move in day when it's ready to go. Got you. I think you'll do it. I believe in you. And Thank you. Uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on is you mentioned that you really like the low budget, affordable type type design right and mm -hmm. i want to give you a shout out for the raffle prize you're giving out um so if you guys are listening and don't know uh kayla's actually giving out a 75 dollar target gift card um mm -hmm. i'm gonna need everybody that's dming me to rig it i'm not gonna rig this for y'all <laughs> okay you know i'm getting threats somebody was like hey if you don't give me this you know what time it is i'm like what are you talking about they're so, target fiends just like me <laughs> So it seems like Target is great for that. So if you guys do win this, it doesn't have to be for home decor. Obviously, just use it forever. So that's a, that's a really dope prize. And mm -hmm. um, now I kind of want to understand more of this blog that you're doing. So I want you to kind of really plug Kayla Simone to the top, <laughs> your best ability. Um, okay, let's see. So the focus of my blog now, which I'm a bad blogger, I haven't 
like actually done a blog post in a while. I've been trying to focus on growing my Instagram following and like doing a lot of content on there. Mm -hmm. But basically the, the focus of Kayla Simone home on Instagram, Pinterest, and on the blog is just being able to show people that like you can, you can do whatever you want with your space. And it doesn't matter if it's a permanent space, like a house or a temporary space, like an apartment, you can make whatever you want out of it. And you don't have to have, there's no pre-qualification to doing it. Like I get messages all the time from like people saying like, Oh my gosh, you're so awesome. Like, I wish I could do this. I'm like, you can, <laughs> I didn't know how to use a miter saw until I went to home Depot. I bought a miter saw and I read the instruction booklet and I was like, all right, we're just going to start cutting stuff. Like mm -hmm. I just, I learn how to do by watching other people. Um, and that's like the type of resource that I want to be for other people so that they can see that they can do whatever they want themselves also. Mm -hmm. That's great. That, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, I'm doing it from a different point of view. Where I'm trying to interview people that are doing it, but uh, that's kind of my, my thing. I want people to understand that a lot of these things that we see and uh, just see people doing, we can do it. Maybe not at that level, but at least mm -hmm. try it. And uh, somebody commented. <laughs> it said, what is that? So you want to explain the saw you just described? Oh, so <laughs> the miter <My> saw. <laughs> so two words, miter, M-I-T-E-R, and then second word, saw. Um, it's like a, a saw that sits on a table and you like, it has the blade and you like use it to cut like strips of wood. Uh, okay or things like that. Um, but the miter part of it means that it can cut things at an angle. So like, for example, I'm doing this project. You should go tune into Kayla Simone home this weekend. Hey, plug I'm, it. <laughs> I'm covering my entryway ceiling in like basically shiplap planks, but I'm doing it in a herringbone pattern, which is like kind of a zigzag. Yeah. So when you get the planks to the edges of the walls, you need to cut it at an angle in order for it to sit flush with the wall. So the miter saw helps you do that. You can cut at 45 degree angles, 30 degree angles. Oh. So it, it sounds complicated. It's really not. You adjust the saw, you pull it down just like normal, and it makes the yeah. cut for you. Okay. I'm glad she asked too, because I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what that was either, <laughs> but I was going to keep it going, kind of like, keep oh, going. yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad she asked. Okay. So, <laughs> and I want to get into the home that you've built, because I've been seeing you do a ton of work with that. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, how did you guys come to the decision, let's build a new home and mm -hmm. let's just let's go, let's do it? Um, so back when we were looking at three bedroom apartments, um, well, Ira and I have been looking at houses for, I guess, like the past two years on and off, not really interested in buying something immediately, um, but just kind of looking at houses, also being a designer, I love going to model homes. So that was kind of like our weekend thing. We would just go walk around model homes. Um, and so looking for a three bedroom apartment, I found a three bedroom condo that was for sale or for rent. Um, and as I went and walked through the lady in the model home was like, yeah, somebody is, um, somebody is renting out their condo, but you could buy one and the mortgage would be cheaper than if you were to rent it from somebody else. So that's what kind of got my brain like turning and thinking about like, okay, maybe this, this is possible. Um, and so we got really close to buying that condo, but something just wasn't sitting right with me about it. There's not, we live in Pflugerville, which is right outside of Austin, like North of Austin, kind of, uh, 25 ish minutes North. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't like that. I couldn't really find any other condos here. So it was hard for me to compare it to other things on the market since there's no other condos. So I'm yeah. like, this could either be really good when we go to sell it or like try to rent it out later, or yeah. it could be really bad because it might mean that nobody around here wants condos. Yeah. Um, so kind of another thing that just fell into my lap, I went to go look at a different model home just for fun. And that neighborhood was completely sold out. It was like a whole street of model homes with nobody in them. Like the salespeople weren't there because the community was sold out. Wow. Um, and I happened to walk into the Ashton Woods model home. Ashton Woods is who built our house. And um, nobody from Ashton Woods was there, but I met a broker that was like, hey, just so you know, they're opening a new development right down the road um, and pre sales start this weekend. So I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like I might check it out. Well, gave him my number. He gave the number to the salesperson and the salesperson texted me about it that weekend and said, 
um, hey, like you should come check out the pre-sales, take a look. Here's a link to the model home. Immediately fell in love with the model home, like virtual walkthrough online. And so we're at our friend's house in Houston this weekend. So we can't actually go see it in person. Yeah. Um, but I'm telling Iram, like, look, we have to get this house. Whatever we have to do, we have <laughs> to get it. I have to have it. I love this floor plan. Like it has everything that I want. And he's like, yeah, 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 Kayla, whatever. Last week you loved the condo. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so <laughs> finally, after like three full days of him treating me like crap about this house and just Damn, telling me like, no, nope, we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> he was being so mean to me. Yeah. Um, after like three days of that, he was like, okay, I just had to make sure you were serious. We'll go see it when we get back. Uh -huh. So we go on like Monday or Tuesday of the next week. And as we're talking to the salesperson, they're like, yeah, we're almost completely sold out of the pre-sales. We only have like three lots left. Wow. And I'm like, you, you've got to be kidding me. You just opened yeah. and you've already sold like 20 something houses. They were not expecting that the first weekend. Killing luckily, like yeah. yeah, luckily one of the like three, maybe I don't know, there was between three and five. One of the ones that they had left was exactly the lot that we wanted it was exactly the elevation, which is like how your house looks on the outside. I just um, learned that this weekend. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So it was exactly the elevation and it was exactly the floor plan that we wanted. We signed for it, sent in our earnest deposit that night. And we we're like, yep, it's done. We got it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a lot. I, I, one thing that stood out to me right when you first started. So when you were about to get that first condo, right, you guys were going there to kind of just rent it just to have another place. And then when you mm -hmm. found out that you could save money and get a mortgage and it's cheaper, when you were looking for new condos to be your own, were you kind of going it into it with like an investment mindset where you kind of like, oh, let's make sure that we, we see what the rents are like in this area. What a, what a house right. is selling for so that you guys aren't just buying a home just to buy a home. Right. So when we were looking at condos, we always knew in the back of our mind, like, it was bigger than our apartment, but because it was two story and it wasn't as big, like it wasn't an open concept floor plan, it felt smaller. Mm -hmm. And then also the fact that it was a condo and it shared that wall with yeah. a neighbor, it kind of felt like apartment 2.0. Yeah. So we were like, I don't think that we will end up living here long term. So I wanted to make sure that if we did want to rent it out, like say within the next five years, that it was going to be something that people were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and that whatever we were going to rent it out for was, we could actually make money off of it. I don't want to have this mortgage and then be renting it out for the same, the exact same amount yeah, as a yeah. mortgage that does me exactly. no good. You're not making any, any cash flow. Okay. That's, right. that's a good thinking. And another thing, I think your mom actually brought it up too, that I was going to ask. So when you heard about these new, this new community, right? And you saw that, oh, dang, they're sold out. But then the, the, the um, community that you ended up falling in love with, there were no mm -hmm. physical homes built. No. Right? So you no. fell in love with it based on how they made it look on the computer. Mm -hmm. At this point, so, yeah. yeah. It, was a, um, it was a virtual walkthrough, but it was of the real house. So Ashton Woods is really awesome that every house that they, like every floor plan that they offer they give a virtual walkthrough oh, of so that house existed. on their website. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It existed someplace else. Gotcha. So like the floor plan walkthrough that we saw of this house was the model home that was in that other sold out neighborhood. Gotcha. And so when we drove into this neighborhood, all it was was just streets and lots. Like mm -hmm. there was nothing here yet. We were actually, even though we weren't the first to buy, we were the first people to move into the neighborhood. Gotcha. So like for two weeks, it was just us and construction workers <laughs> living <Biden>. out here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. That, that makes me a little, kind of answers my question a little bit, but I was going to ask like, you know, being that uh, you're moving into this new community, you know, nothing's mm -hmm. here. You don't really know the market. I guess technically you do know the market because they already sold out next door. What made mm -hmm. you confident that if you were to move again in this next five to 10 years, that this is a place that you could rent out and also potentially sell. Did you do any analysis on that? So we looked at um, the price of the house that we were getting here compared to what similar houses were going for in like in the surrounding Pflugerville area. Mm -hmm. Building this for what we were getting, the level of like finishes that we wanted, the fact that we wouldn't have to renovate because we were just going to go ahead and upgrade some of the things through our builder. Mm -hmm it was much more cost effective to do this than it would have been to like buy something else that already existed. Yeah, but we definitely paid attention to um, 
like making sure we knew that we wanted to live in Pflugerville because it's just an up and coming area yeah. as Austin spreads out. It's getting like closer and closer to Pflugerville. Um, so the, like the house prices will continue exactly. to go up. Yeah, like for example, potential. right, exactly. Like while the house was being built, the base price of our house has already gone up like $30,000. So that right there is already equity because exactly. we bought it at that, the lowest it could possibly be. And it'll only keep going up from there. Mm -hmm. So that was like a big thing for us is making sure that when we do go to sell or rent it out, we're going to be able to get our money back and then some at the end. And I just learned about that recently because I was going to, my next question was going to be, you got in at the pre-sale, right? And for mm -hmm. people that are, you know, for builders, basically what they do is they kind of like, hey, we're going to build here at this price. And then yep. the moment people start buying that and they start building more, they, they force the price up, right? Right. So you guys mm -hmm. got very, very lucky to get in yes. there very early. And you've already seen that appreciation. So mm -hmm. um, that's really dope. And now I'm kind of, I want to kind of get into, you, you mentioned that you guys didn't want to buy any upgrades. You guys wanted to do it yourself. You knew that coming in. So we bought some things that we couldn't do ourselves. Like for example, we have a built-in oven and a built-in microwave. Um, so they're like in the cabinet instead of being like an oven that just sits on the floor mm -hmm. that we knew that was something we couldn't do ourselves because it changes the way that they build the cabinets. Gotcha. Um, but like our floors, for example, our builder didn't offer the floors that we wanted. So like a non hardwood scratch resistant floor in a light color like this, they only had dark colors. So we had them put in all standard tile, like that whole living room back there used to be carpet where I'm sitting in the kitchen was tile, like big gray builder grade tile. Yeah. The day that we closed, we had somebody come in and rip out all the tile. We <sighs> ripped out all the carpet ourselves, and the very next day people were in here installing the floors. Wow. We don't waste any time. Yeah, I like that. And oh, another thing I just remembered, you said when you first, when you saw the house that you wanted, you guys mm -hmm. were able to put in your earnest deposit that night. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were looking for these houses, were you already pre-approved by mortgage lenders or? How yes. Did, okay. So um, part of buying a new construction home, usually they have like a preferred lender that you can work with. Mm -hmm. So after we had looked at the lot and we said, yes, we want to buy it, we contacted the um, like preferred lender that Ashton Woods uses. We gave him all of our information and he was the one that told us like, okay, you're pre-approved for this amount. So you're good for this house. And then he told Ashton Woods that that night, it was like after work hours. That's another good thing about working with the, um, with the builder's lender mm -hmm. is that they're going to help you do every single thing that you mm -hmm. need to. Like yeah. every lender is going to help you, but because they already have that relationship, exactly. our lender was able to just text the salesperson and say, Hey, they're good. So that we could go ahead and send in that money. We didn't have to wait until like yeah. 8 a.m. the next morning because if we would have waited, we would have lost the house. Okay. There was another person waiting in line to get this exact house. So luckily, we were able to get in that night. I see. I see. That's really dope because I'm actually working with a preferred lender for the house I'm looking at. He's mm -hmm. taking some time to get back to me though. So I'm about to like send this interview <laughs> over like, yo, bro. like, Hey, <laughs> I you heard. saw me on it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's dope. And uh, a question I had about that because... I wanted to know going into this, what was your real estate education like? Because, you know, one thing that's very pretty common is if you're going to look for lenders, look at multiple just to make sure you're mm -hmm. getting the best rate, best deal. So going into this, were you guys kind of pretty well known on real estate or what? Um, not really. I feel like I kind of research as I go. So we knew like for the pre-approval, you only need a pre-approval letter for one person. And then we didn't actually start comparing until we got further along in the process. I definitely recommend, like you were saying, compare lenders so that you can get the best deal possible. We went back and forth with our lender multiple times saying like, hey, they're willing to give us this interest yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's COVID interest rates just dropped again. Get us yeah. a better deal. Um, but I'd say throughout the whole process, it was just researching as much as we could when new things kind of popped up. Mm -hmm. And then I would try to document that on my blog for everybody else, because some of that information is kind of hard to find, or it's hard to find in words that make sense. Yeah, to us. exactly. Right. That's, that's the big thing is like, one thing I've uh, learned, especially going through this process is the actual physical transaction of purchasing a home is easy. You know what I'm saying? A mm -hmm. lender, if you want to sign with, they'll give you money. They might right. not tell you everything, but they'll give you money. But the more I, I, I talk to people, I'm asking everybody, they're like, oh, 
did you think about that? And I'm like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's a big thing I've learned is uh, definitely do your mm-hmm. research. Uh, but the yep. best research is just reaching out to people that have already done it and seeing mm-hmm. how they actually went about it. So that's, I've definitely learned from that. So it seems like you're kind of yeah. on the same path. And one thing I wanted to ask, now that you guys are in your home, I'm seeing like a little bit of preview behind you, <laughs> is how would you define your style? Because you, you say you're an interior designer and your, 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 even your college dorm was very impressive. But mm-hmm. if, if I'm looking for a place, I want somebody to design my place, why should I choose you? Um, my style, I think, is probably like contemporary casual. So I like clean, sleek. I mainly decorate in neutrals. It's very hard for me to commit to color because I get tired of things so quickly. So that's why in my house, you basically only see like white, tan, black. It's fire though. Um, it's fire though. I think it looks great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would say whenever you're looking for a designer, try to find somebody that can mimic the style that you want for your own home. Like for example, I could do super modern farmhouse. I could do glitzy glam if I wanted to, but what I'm best at is the style that I love. That's just what comes naturally to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So not to shoo anybody away from trying to hire me for a future project. You gotta gotta bring them all in. (laughs) (laughs) But the easiest and I think the best experience that you'll have is looking for a designer whose own style and whose like um signature style fits your own style Mm -hmm. like i don't know you wouldn't really go to i i don't can't even think of a good example but like you wouldn't go to 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 buy a suit like Like, they might make suits but like that's not really what they do exactly yeah Find somebody that fits what you want. So, okay. Yeah. Or like, want, you said Burger King. Didn't yeah. you start selling like tacos or like something random? Yeah. Like, one time? You gotta, like, why would you go there for that? Exactly. Right. So, no, I wanted you to say that so that people that, um, you know, definitely follow Kayla Simone home if you guys have any yes. questions, any interests. You know what I'm saying? I think um, I definitely want you to, to kind of get that, that clout you deserve because I think earlier we were talking about it. You, you're fully... De- um, committing to the fact that you do want to be an influencer. You do want people to know who you are, what you do, and mm-hmm. get your name out there, right? So I wanted to ask yeah. you, how were you going about doing these things? Like, what's on your mind in terms of increasing your audience and your platform? Um, I think always in the back of my mind is just, how can I generate more content? Like, I'm, and people make fun of it. They're like, I feel like you're just doing this to put on your Instagram. What's wrong with that? If, <laughs> if that is your job... What's wrong with doing something, number one, that you love, Mm -hmm. but so that you can show people that it can be done and so that you have something to do. You have something for people to watch. I feel like influencers a lot of time get a bad rap. Like I've seen influencers that they've done their whole house and then moved and people get mad about it. But I mean, that's our job. We create, we make a house look pretty. And then just like any other project, you move on to the The next next project. So I'm just always thinking what's going to make me happy about my space because I'm the one that has to live here. But then Mm -hmm. also, what do my followers want to see? What questions are they asking me? Um, What tutorials are people looking for on Pinterest? Or like, what do I have a hard time finding that I could make easily accessible for everybody? Mm -hmm. No, I love that. I think, uh, I love that you're committing to it too, because I think if, if you know that my thing that I want to do with my, with my profile, with my platform is show people what I'm doing, then you have to commit to that. You know what I'm saying? If you know right. you want to be an influencer, then you need to influence. And I think yeah. in order to do that, you have to post. So mm-hmm. I think as long as you know what you're doing, because I think there is also the cons of like social media, right? Uh, when you're being an influencer, you're going to be, you're influenced by how people are reacting to it. So you right. might get nervous, like, oh, like nobody's liking this, nobody's sharing mm-hmm. this. But I think as long as you keep in the mind why you're doing it and you're making sure that you're doing it at your best, then mm-hmm. I don't think you can you can't you can't worry about it too much, you know? So Right, exactly. Like I have I'm so thankful for I don't have a ton of followers, but I'm thankful for every single one of them because literally every single time that I start to think like, oh, nobody reads my blog posts or nobody wants to see me install these light switches. Like who cares about that? I'll get a DM from somebody that's like, thank you so much. Your blog post helped me at my design meeting today. Mm-hmm. And it like, it really, it's so stupid, but it makes me tear up. Cause I'm like, if I could 
influence if I could help this one person and like make this aspect of their life easier there's probably 10 other people that this has helped that I don't even know about. So I think it's really cool to get to like, not just do something for myself, which is designing my house, but be able to have a hand in helping other people do that for their own houses. And it doesn't cost them anything. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Your mom just keeps dropping gems. She says, stay, <laughs> stay true to your vision and purpose. Can I interview her next? Like, can we schedule <laughs> that? Yes. And uh, no, I want to, I think I want to comment on that too. Cause I relate, you know, I've, I've, I'm always trying to figure out the best way to promote my podcast or put it out there or just the branding, right? And like, mm -hmm. the thing is, you never really know who's listening, right? And I, right. today I actually got a DM that was like, they were commenting on my story, but then they added, oh, also, I love your show, by the way, I'm a big fan. And in my head, I'm like, nice. I didn't even know you were listening. Like, I didn't right. have no idea. So mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, even though you are doing it for others, you have to figure out why you're doing it. And if you know mm -hmm. why you're doing it, just fully dedicate yourself to that and right. that's that's what the the what you're getting the pleasure out of so i i definitely relate to you and i think you're doing a great job getting your influences you. I, I try to watch the story sometimes because i'm like <laughs> okay i'm gonna copy that style real quick put it, <laughs> put it in this part of my house so yeah no i think i think it's dope and i think hopefully this podcast helps to helps you get more of that word out and uh we're actually starting to near the end and i wanted to kind of ask you something I, I ask everybody, right? You mm -hmm. know, now that with, with all that you've done, all the jobs that you've had, you know, <laughs> yeah. all the jobs you, you might have in the future, you know, mm -hmm. um, what are some words of advice that you would like to share that you feel have helped you become who you are today? I think it's really two words and it's keep pushing. Like you never, you never realize when you're, how close you are to getting to that next step and let, until you take it. So every single time that I've had to kind of switch gears or switch jobs, every single thing has gotten me closer to where I am today without realizing it. I can laugh about losing all those jobs now, but of course at the time it was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? Like, this is terrible. This is not what I went to college for. How am I going to make it work? But if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you're trying to do and you just, you say, okay, you know what? That didn't work out. So we're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to find something else. If you know where your end goal is, keep striving for that. And you, you really will get there. It's mm -hmm. yeah. Keep pushing. I like that. Keep pushing. Y'all heard it here first. And uh, before I let you go, I want to ask, do you have anything you want to promo? Anything you got big that you want to announce? Just you have the platform right now. Um, definitely follow Kayla Simone home because I'm always doing fun projects. Like I said, it costs you zero dollars to support your favorite influencer. Um, so follow, like my posts, comment on my posts, interact <laughs> with my posts, like save the posts, like all of those things help out. Um, like my Instagram, it helps me become an influencer and it tells other brands like, Hey, this girl's cool. We like people like her content. Let's work with her and it will help me get to the point where I can provide even more like cool stuff for you guys because my projects won't be limited to the money in my bank account. Exactly. So hey, that's, know. that's the goal. Hey, likewise, yo, follow Paul and Pals, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me piggyback off your promo. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, I, I really appreciate you uh, willing to do this. Um, I know it kind of caught you off guard, but I think you did a great job. Thank and you. <laughs> I'm excited for uh, what you got. Uh, shout out to your moms for all the, all the dope messages. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to wrap it up with the rest of the uh, game. Okay, perfect. Thanks right. for tuning Thank in, so guys. Much.